and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as God's children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of God's will, to the praise of God's glorious grace that God freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of God's grace that God lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of God's will, according to the good pleasure that God set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of God, who accomplished all things according to God's counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Kurt. To welcome and honor the risen Christ among us, I invite you to stand for the reading of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of humanity, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made God known. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, from the beginning and before and beyond the end, you have been and always will be with us. May your word live in our hearts, the light that shines within us for all the world to see. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father as we enter into this new an exciting year. Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year to all of you. What a pleasure it is to be together with you this morning, and what a wonderful place to be as we begin a new year. I mean, I just love to start off a new year each year in church. 
surrounded by my brothers and sisters in Christ and wrapped in the warmth of the gospel stories that remind me of the presence of God with us as we begin a new year. What a comfort it is to know that no matter where we go in 2022, God promises to be there with us every step of the way. And so God's blessings be to all of you as we begin this new year together. Today truly is a day for us to think about beginnings and endings, not only on the calendar, but also beginnings and ending within the seasons of the church too. Today is the final season, uh, the final Sunday of the season of Christmas for the church. And this week, we'll, we will come to the end of the Christmas season and the beginning of the season of Epiphany on Thursday, January 6th. Both of these seasons continue to remind us through the stories from Scripture of the amazing, of the amazing way that God's love comes to us throughout the years. It has been a blessing to celebrate with you the season of Christmas once again as we heard the stories of Jesus' birth and the humble way that God's love came to our world and the babe of Bethlehem long ago. And I found it especially meaningful this year to gather for Christmas together with all of you here in worship after COVID has kept so many of us apart for such a long time. To be able to be together with you again meant so much to me, and I know it has meant a lot for many of you too. There's just nothing more important in all of the world than being together with those that we love. And on this second Sunday after Christmas, our gospel story from the book of John reminds us of this truth once again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being through Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. I absolutely love the way John begins his gospel with these words, with an intimate image of God and God's word together. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. An image of love that is inseparable from one another. An image of God and God's creative love that can never be apart from one another. A bond of love that cannot be broken. I've been thinking a lot about this image this past week and throughout these past weeks of Christmas as we gather together throughout this season once again. It has been another strange and stressful year for all of us, again, to say the least. Throughout this pandemic, many things have continued to keep us apart from one another. Not only the fear of catching the virus, but also the many political and social things that have come between us, even between us and people that we love the most. And now as the new year begins, we will wonder if these things will continue as the virus surges again and the bickering and the anger and the mistrust threatens to tear us apart even more. There seems to be so many things that have come between us and that, that image of God with us that sometimes we wonder if God is with us anymore. It's hard not to feel alone in a world that has pulled so many people apart. So where do we turn for the comfort that we need, for the reassurance we need that, that God is still with us as we begin a new year together? 
Well, maybe where we need to look is back to the beginning again. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being through him was life. And the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. The word that was with God in the beginning is a word that gave life and light to all of creation. The word that was so much a part of God, that word was God, became part of creation, the, the creation that God loves to. The very breath of God became the breath of God that lives within all of us. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. God with and God in all of creation. Can you imagine a love so great? A love so great that it would choose to become one with us. One with you. There is nothing more important in this world than being together with those that we love. And there is nothing more important to God, too. Last spring, after the vaccine against COVID became available, my wife traveled together with her cousin to Boston to see her cousin's grandchildren. And after more than a year of only seeing her grandchildren on FaceTime, she was anxious to see them again in person. And as she shared the story of seeing her grandchildren again with Joanne, she told Joanne that she didn't know whether her 18-month-old grandchild would even remember her again. And as soon as my wife and her cousin walked in the door of their home, Joanne's cousin received a big hug from her grandson. And she couldn't help but shout out loud, you do remember me. It was a joyful moment, to say the least. And I thought about this story that Joanne shared with me again this week and the stories of how God, too, has come to be with us. In the beginning, when the word of God breathed God's very breath into all of creation, becoming one with all that is and ever will be, God looked at everything God had made with a mother's love and declared it to be so very good. And as creation toddled into being, something went terribly wrong. And something awful became between God, the Creator, and the creation that the Creator loved. And for a time, they could not be together as they once had been. But this could not be. For the Creator loved His creation too much to ever let it go. And so the Word that had once breathed life became more than just the breath of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And for a time, into our world full of uncertainties and fears and all the things that stand between us and God, came the light of God's love looking for the creation that had wandered away. And when God found us, God took us into his loving arms 
and brushed away the dirt of sin from our face and washed us cleaner than we'd ever been before and became one with us once again. This is the hope of Christmas and of each new year. This is what brings us together even when for a time we may have been apart. This is the hope of God's love that can heal us again and will. For it is a hope not of our own making, but of the God who loves us and promises to be with us always. Thank you, God, for loving us with a love that knows no end. Amen.